Hey guys, Mike here. So what an interesting day in the market. Very boring until 2 o'clock when the FOMC minutes came out. Then the fun began. But then the last 45 minutes of the day, oh my goodness, what a move the market made. And of course, we'll get into that stuff. NVIDIA earnings are not out as I'm recording this right now. Probably won't be out by the time I finish. But if they do come out, my phone is right here. I won't let you know. So we're not going to cover a whole bunch of charts because that's going to shift everything, right? Is what's going to happen. But we will cover quite a few and also we'll talk about something in the second half of the video when it comes to the housing market a lot of data released and i'll show you why i don't understand without a recession how we reach the fed's goal of inflation if that's what they're using when they want to try to cut rates and stuff okay now when you look at the morning news bureau put out man some of these earnings that came out oh my goodness you got palo alto networks down 24 percent, which is the biggest decline in seven years dollar wise i mean it tanked huge right uh and then of course teledoc's garbage company i'm gonna talk about that one a little bit and get your opinion down 20 percent uh solar edge goes down 20 percent toll bros actually goes up uh especially off of luxury home building but then there's vertiv which we'll talk about which i never even heard of but it's one of the nvidia ceo's favorite companies and this thing tanked, but boy, wait till you see the recovery on this one right here. So a lot of them are decreasing guidance. That's why they're getting crushed, of course. And look at Palo Alto right here. Boy, that is a weekly candle. And oh my goodness. And of course, you got maybe what seems to be a bearish magic cross in the weekly. But look at that candle. Down huge, over $100 a share on this thing. And you can see when you look at this, I mean, obviously it's had an enormous run up. We just kind of pan out. Let me go to the weekly again. I mean, this thing's it's gonna get in the COVID low. Just look at this. Oh, 500 plus percent, almost 600 percent. Then you get like the October low when it tanked in 2022, along with everything else. It actually didn't go down as much as a lot of other stocks did, though, right? It actually held up rather well. I mean, I know 30 percent sounds like a lot, 33 percent, but you know, remember what some of the stocks were going down? And then once it bottomed, baby, 171 percent move up. So look at that candle. Woo! wiped out all of this year's gains plus november and december as well and it's past the 50 fibonacci level as you can see on the retracement here from the move up to the top right there and you know when you look a lot of people are going to target this golden pocket between like 240 252 somewhere in there as far as like picking up shares and everything because oh man but you know this is one of those examples when you run up into earnings and you don't hit it, you will get punished. And this is just a severe, severe punishment for sure. So that is a huge gap right there. This one is one that drops so much. I don't know about a three to five day rule on this one. And the reason why is because when you come over here, you can see what did it do? It bounced off the 200 day moving average. And so maybe that's what's going to save it. Again, we'll have to see, of course, with NVIDIA earnings and the market, if the market starts to roar tomorrow, right, going up, most likely you'll see this one start to get bought up as well but again we'll have to see so keep it on your radar now another one teledox look at this piece of garbage down 95 percent steel how many stocks do you know that have recovered i'm talking about high beta other garbage stocks have recovered but this one can still drop down to like nine dollars and 55 cents you can see i mean all of that move since november gone completely gone and i mean 47 percent move up completely wiped out look at that gone and i mean what a mess i'm gonna talk about this in just a minute but when you look at the other one which was the ceo of nvidia this thing plunges and then look at the recovery this is what ai does for you right here this is what having nvidia in your corner can do for you what a recovery then sells back off and so i think this one will go with how nvidia goes and why i believe that and you look at this day look at this run up oh my goodness i mean that is an ai pump for you that's what that is $10 to over $60. I mean, look at that weekly chart. Oh my goodness. And if you pull up NVIDIA, the reason why I'm saying it goes as NVIDIA goes, because the charts almost look identical. Okay. You see what I'm talking about here? So let's pull up NVIDIA and just watch this one. And you'll see that look identical. I mean, look at that. That's 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 uh pretty close, right? And so again, when the CEO came out, I forgot how long ago it was he was saying this is one of his favorite companies, blah, blah, blah. You know, just look at it. you see the dip on the top, same dip there. I mean, every time NVIDIA sold off, this one sold off with it. And so, you know, it's, this one will go as how NVIDIA goes on its earnings. And so to take one second on Teladox, I'll say this. The reason why I never believed in it, because I've tried using them multiple times and maybe they've changed. But I know a year ago, a year and a half ago, when I had a pinched nerve in my neck, anybody who's ever had a pinched nerve knows how painful 
It is, okay, it's excruciating. Mine was so bad that it literally almost paralyzed the entire back of my arm. I went from being able to do a hundred push-ups in one setting, and well, actually, not just that, my bicep as well, and my lat and everything, it was bad. But I couldn't do not one pull-up, not one push-up. I was doing a hundred push-ups in one setting and 25 pull-ups without stopping. Zero, done, had to go through over a year rehab. What I call these people, have them on a weekend, Say, hey, can I get like a painkiller? So I can get some muscle relaxers? No, we can't do that. And I was like, what? All, all we can do is give you something for the information. What? Okay, thanks. You know, it, I just don't see the point in it. it. Doesn't make any sense. And now the other companies, like my doctor, they do telehealth stuff too. So why would I have to go with them? It doesn't make any sense. And so you see that in the stocks. I don't, I mean, I know, I don't know if Kathy Woods is still in that stock or not, but I find it, that company to be a hot mess. So let me know what you think in the comments, though. And uh, if you're still in it. Now, what else happened? Had the bond auction, the 20 year bond auction did not go well. Okay. It was weak. So, of course, yields spike around one o'clock. Market doesn't like it. Sells back down. You can see on the 30, two year, 10 year, all that good stuff. That sells the market down. Two o'clock hits. FOMC minutes come out. We get to hear the same stuff we've heard from them. Market sells down big time, but then look at this recovery after three o'clock. Absolutely just unbelievable rage. Like I think it's 0.8%, almost basically about 0.9% when it was all said and done right here. Because I was recording this right two minutes before close. And so that is just nuts, man. And I'm assuming call buyers were coming in, everybody's shorts are covering and everything. And you just see this move up and just the man. So it literally passed the opening price, which we've been setting below for all day long there there and just an amazing move up by this let me know if you got in this at all i was actually going to be riding calls into tomorrow I ended up selling them but i did pick up another college for the heck of it uh, to see what happens tomorrow and then of course tesla we'll talk about because this one you know came up ends up closing up that gap right there and that was the top it sold off boom just like the market did come straight down remember i told you i said if they go through a fair value you got like a hot knife through butter that will continue, and that's what happened. It came right through that fair value gap right there, like a hot knife through butter, continued on to hit that trend line, mitigated that other fair value gap right there, and it finally found some support. And that line is basically just one I made up because it's in this broadening wedge pattern right here since like the 5th. And so it has some support there. We'll see if it holds again. Uh, all these these charts are going to depend on NVIDIA, right? If it pours great, AI pumps, market pumps. If, if it doesn't hit earnings or if it's a selling news event, uh, it's going to be kind of rough. So let's just kind of keep that in mind. And you still got some four-hour value gaps below right there to bounce off of. But again, let's see how NVIDIA reports, how the market takes it. Now that leads me to this right here. And guys, before we continue, if you could hit that like button for me, I sure would appreciate it. It helps people find this video and everything. And also, if you like the content, think about subscribing, guys. And that's the housing market, right? You understand, look at this right here. So U.S. mortgage rates are back above 7%, right? This is a 30-year fix they're talking about right here. And you can see what happens to the applications at the bottom here. Wow, they go down, right? So as this goes up, they go down. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you can see as they rose, obviously it went down. And so people can't buy because it's too high, can't qualify, all this good stuff. So, but look at the new listings, right? So this kind of came out, I believe it was yesterday, right? New listings are dipping down again. But look at what was happening, okay? I want you to look right here. We're coming crashing down. All of a sudden, boom, October, November last year hits, and it starts to really spike up, right? And so, and then, of course, now it's dipping over. Why? Because rates are going back up. Why was it coming back up? Because rates were doing what? They were going lower, so I'll show you in just a second. But when you look, what happens to prices? It drives people out to start buying. And so what do you see the medium sales pricing doing? For January... It was up 5.2% year over year to around $402,343, the biggest jump since September of 2022, as you can see by this chart right here. And when we go back and we say, well, what, what caused that right there to happen? I don't understand what's going on. Well, when we look, same chart, what was going on here from October down to around December? The rates fell off a cliff. They fell down almost a full percentage point right here, right? There's that right there. That's where you see home mortgage applications spiking up, going up, right? Rates are dropping only just a percent because why? The bankers are telling them. I got a friend who does this for a living. They're calling. Hey, man, getting these houses now, when rates drop, you can refinance, right? Because then they'll, they'll, they'll do a double bagger. They'll get, the, get you in the house. They'll get their fees, and then they'll refinance you and get your fees, right? If you don't believe that chart, you just go over here to Fred, right? 30-year fixed mortgage rates. You can see. There's the drop, right? 
And then you start to see this little pop back over to the right right there. But again, it took only like three months for it to drop down a full percent. It took almost a year to get it up from that point, right? And so it takes a lot longer to get them up than it does down. So they, they spike down really fast. When that happens, obviously maybe, maybe some of you guys did this. Maybe you some of you guys bought, so put it in the bottom. Why do I talk about this? Look at CPI versus CPI rent. Okay, this is another part of this that will tie into the picture here, right? Look at CPI. Well, we know it's the number is supposed to have been falling off a cliff, but look at CPI rent. Okay, because the housing market as a whole is people who rent and people who buy, right? It is still, though, normal rents aren't even close to what the percentage increase every year is, right? Normally, and I used to be in the business back in the day, so 3 to 4%, and you're still sitting between 5 and 6 right now, right? Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. I mean, especially if you're renting, right? And so there's no tax benefits of that or anything. So we're still way up there, even though there's... So look at the huge gap between CPI and the rents, right? And of course, why is this important? My question all along is, how can you have a normal thriving economy and also the Fed hit their target rate of 2%, whatever they want to put it at right now, if you don't have a normal functioning real estate market, which we've never seen this before. We've never had the combination of this high of prices, this high of mortgage rates, and this low of inventory. That's just the way it is. Because people who, usually you're going to have what? Two kind of inventories coming out. Not just the newly built ones, but the already owned houses, right? Coming on the market. And so, but that's what's froze up because we're all like, oh, I got a 2% mortgage rate. I'm good. And what am I going to do? Go buy another house that looks like mine for you know, twice what I pay for this one? That doesn't make any sense unless you have to move or you're moving from California or New York or some expensive area coming to a cheaper area. That's why people coming to Florida, there is no kind of debate about who's going to buy it. They're paying cash. So you don't stand a chance to get a house if you're not paying cash in Florida a lot of places. That's just the way it is, right? And so, you know, when you look at this, talking about the normal functioning, you know, ec economy and all this stuff, the reason why, because housing combined ends up being about 15, 18% of GDP. That's broken down to residential investment, which we know about is building single and family, multifamily homes, uh, remodeling, which Home Depot says in the gutter right now, uh, manufactured home trailers. And broker's fees, right? Which would be, you know, refinance and selling all that. Then you got consumption spending on housing. This is 12 to 13 percent, right? It includes the gross rents, utilities paid by renters, as well as owners and putative rents and utility payments. And then the big thing is this what percentage of this goes towards CPI? Well, housing represents one third of headline CPI. And then when it comes to PCE, it accounts for 16% of headline PCE and 18% of the core PCE, which is what the Fed likes to look at. And you got to ask yourself this. If you own a home, right, like we do now, and let's say right now you, you got it on the market, right? You're probably getting, if, if mortgage rates are over 7%, maybe you're getting how many offers? Put in the comments. One, maybe two, right? So what happens if rates drop to six, five and a half, five, whatever it is, somewhere in that range? You're going to get more offers, right? If you get more offers, are you going to lower the price of your house because you got more offers or are you going to allow the bidding war to begin and either keep it the same or go whoever's got the highest bid, that's who we're going with, right? That makes more sense to me and more people are less likely to do what? Drop the price of the home as the more bids you're getting. And so that's why I don't understand without a big surge in unemployment, recession, I don't know how you fix that mess, okay? Because a recession causes what? Causes unemployment. And so some people have to move out of their houses. That creates inventory to come on the market and be forced to sell the house, right? Okay. And then on top of that, the home builders, they're going to keep building. They may not build at a faster pace, that's for sure, because they're definitely dragging their feet on that one. But, you know, you'll still have inventory coming up, right? And then there's going to be plenty of people that are renting that have money saved up and everything else. And they're going to go and they have jobs. And they're like, man, get me out of this rent right here, because this rent is crazy what we're paying right now. I need to own my own place and they're going to go into it. So that's what I, I, I just don't get without it. So let me know on the bottom. Again, I've never gotten a satisfaction answer from anybody to be able to say, I don't, I don't know how you fix this mess without a recession. So, and looking at that data, it just proves to me if, if rates start to go down, right, more people are going to come out to buy because they don't want to pay these crazy rents they're paying right now, right? Especially there's no tax benefit for it or anything. Now, we'll end with this. There are more earnings tomorrow, believe it or not, right? So you have Moderna, Nikola, which is hot garbage, Fiverr, Wayfair. And then you come over in the afternoon. That's when you get your really high beta stuff. So you have Block, which is known as Square, Carvana, Mercado Libre, 
You end up with bookings.com, Intuit, and so Vail's another one to watch out for. And then when it comes to economic data, you'll have plenty of it coming out tomorrow with continuous jobless claims, initial jobless claims, S&P Global Composite, PMI Flash, Manufacturing PMI Flash, Services PMI Flash, a lot of home data coming out as well about the home sales month over month and stuff, a lot of that gas stuff. And then we're going to end up with a 30-year tips auction, so we'll see how that one goes, along with more Fed speakers. And as I'm getting down recording this, NVIDIA just reported earnings, and it looks like they crushed earnings again uh, with upbeat guidance, it looks like, and they're up around 7% in after hours. So if that holds, you'll definitely see a green market because it will lift all semiconductors up, which watch SMCI to see if it follows, because if it follows, I mean IWM, small caps, will also be surging. We'll see if it holds or not, because remember, I think the last few times they reported, they may have popped also, but then they sold off in the next few days. So let's watch and see uh, how this goes and stuff. So anyway, hope you guys got something out of it. Hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it, guys. And tomorrow will make for another fun day. So see you tomorrow.